Welcome back to A Moment in History. I'm Seth Udinsky. Well, historians often mark the end of the 5th century AD as the official fall of the Roman Empire and the end of the ancient world. This was a vital time in the course of Western history as the dominant power that had ruled the West for over 500 years was now gone, and the Christian religion was spreading like wildfire throughout an otherwise barbaric landmass. During this transition from Rome to the Middle Ages, a man rose to power in the region of Gaul who would embody this transformation and effectively become the first medieval king of Europe. Let's explore the de facto inaugural king of France, Clovis I. Now remember, we have to give our Dark Ages disclaimer with this. A good portion of the information we have from this period is based as much in tradition and legend as it is in actual historical fact. Let's not get carried away with this and assume that everything is legend. It's just a good reminder for us. Now to Clovis. Historians peg his birth around the year 466 AD, only 10 years before Rome would fall with the removal of the last Western emperor, the young Romulus Augustulus. At 15 years old, Clovis rose to power in his familial dynasty, the Merovingians, who, by the way, would come to rule the former Roman region of Gaul for the next two centuries. As a young man, he partook in the free-for-all of Western European tribal lords jumping on former Roman-occupied land and took for himself the region of Gaul. He would become known in history as the King of the Franks, which, of course, is the modern region of France. With his kingdom firmly established in Western Europe, Clovis made a dramatic change that would forever alter the political and religious landscape of the region. He converted to Christianity sometime likely in the 480s and was baptized, most likely after a military victory, which helped him further stabilize his rule. Now, historians are uncertain as to both the specific time of his conversion as well as its sincerity. Many wonder if Clovis, like Constantine before him, jumped on Christianity as a unifying force to help him consolidate power. Regardless, Clovis' conversion to Christianity helped spread the faith all throughout Western Europe, where it would become the singular dominant force in European society for more than 1,000 years. Additionally, Clovis provided the template of the mixture of Roman, Germanic, and Christian culture that would shape the fabric of medieval Europe. He established a capital city on the old Roman fortification of Paris, which to this day serves as the capital of the French nation. And he would also be a prime Christian political ally to the young Byzantine Empire. Like his birth, historians are uncertain of the exact date of his death, with some arguing for 511 AD and others for 513. His dynasty would last until the rise of the Carolingians in the 8th century AD, out of which would come the mighty Germanic king and first Holy Roman Emperor, Charlemagne. Thanks so much for joining me once again for A Moment in History. For more historical content, subscribe and click that bell to get notifications for when our next Moment in History comes out. Until next time, I'm Seth Udinsky.